Whenever we put together a list of recommended parts for building your own PC, there's one complaint that all you shows- You eBay, you dumb Canadian f Yeah, that. You know, that was pretty mean, but the random stranger I've never met and never will has a point. Maybe it's just as viable and maybe it's way cheaper to build a PC on eBay. Maybe within the same budget, you could build a much more kick-ass rig than you could by going through Newegg or Amazon. Maybe none of this is a maybe, because maybe we already did it. And maybe I'm gonna tell you guys all about it. G-Skills Trident Z Royal Series DDR4 RAM features a polished aluminum heat spreader in gold or silver and this gorgeous crystalline light bar that radiates RGB in every direction. Check it out at the link below. So we began our journey with a spec list for like a, a decent gaming PC on PC Part Picker that ended up at just over a thousand dollars for all new parts at retail prices. Now, we didn't choose this price point for any particular reason, other than that it's just kind of what we ended up with for a good bang for the buck gaming PC. So, with any luck, eBay is either going to increase our bang or decrease the buck. Now, of course, regardless of price, the main disadvantage of ordering off eBay is that you're going to be stuck getting all of your parts piecemeal which for us meant that we actually had to wait about a month in between ordering all this stuff and making this video here for you people, which is gonna be an eternity if you're just looking to fire up some Apex Legends with your buddies. Now to mitigate that somewhat, we did actually limit ourselves to buy it now items rather than furiously refreshing auction pages. So you can assume that with some more patience, you could actually do a little bit better than us, but then how well did we do? <laughs> it's time for a haul video. Yay! Let's start off with our case then, okay? This honestly didn't matter much. We were going for cheap and functional and it ended up being a Rosewill Nautilus that won the day. It was packed, well, enough and it's arguably a reasonably attractive case too if you're into the whole kind of glossy uh, plastic look. Um, now you might be thinking to yourself when you first open up the uh, case, doesn't the Nautilus come with two fans in the box? And yes it does, they just happened to be loose in the box for us for some reason. Actually if we're being honest, the shipping was overall quite horrible for this thing. And worse, the Nautilus is supposed to have a windowed side panel. And as you guys already saw, it does. It just was installed on the wrong side. So clearly they were packing it up in a freaking hurry. I mean, this is what you get sometimes when you go with eBay. And the thing is that with cheap cases, we actually found that the pricing for used ones on eBay wasn't really any better than just buying an entry level case at retail. Unless of course, you count the extra value. Ah yes, not one, not two, but three extra SATA cables were included in the box. So then once we get all of our wires managed and kind of where they're supposed to be, right, gotta take that off, that's a, that's a window there. We can move on. Zero gravity. That seems to be what whoever packed this was hoping for, because that's the only way it was gonna survive. Next up, it, next up is our power supply. An 80 plus rating for the power supply of any modern computer is pretty much non-negotiable. And we're gonna want about 500 watts of continuous power for our build to live and to give us some room to expand. Now, despite its shortcomings, like its lack of modular cabling and if we're being honest, middling overall performance, 
EVGA's 500B fit the bill for us nicely. Now this one right here is an open box model, so it hasn't been used very much, if at all, actually it doesn't have a speck of dust on it. So this looks like a pretty good score for 25 US dollars. Now for the platform that's gonna go into our you know, kind of rat's nest over here, we wanted something that was gonna have at least eight threads with enough per thread performance that games won't end up slowed down by our CPU. So Ryzen is kind of a no brainer at this price point, And there were some very decent deals to be had on the Gen 1 Ryzen 5 1600X. Now we had considered an engineering sample Core i7 8700 non-K, but it has a locked multiplier and no heat sink in the box. If we're gonna have to buy a CPU cooler anyway, we want to be able to overclock. So we ended up, by the way, is this gonna, get this out, there we go. With a deep cool Gammax 400, which cost us about $24. Now, with just a six core CPU and a single graphics card, we don't need the fanciest motherboard on the block. So we went hunting for a B series board with a decent VRM layout for that overclocking. Now virtually all the options available on eBay with decent pricing were refurbs, which means that they only come with IO shields if you're lucky, although we did also get a Wi-Fi antenna, so that's nice. But thankfully, that's actually not a big deal for us, thanks to our, wait for it, bonus SATA cables. Anyway, the choice really came down to between two boards from ASUS, the B350 Plus and the B450 Plus. Now the chipset difference doesn't really matter for us because we're running first gen Ryzen, but we decided to spend the extra $5 on the newer B450 board, if only because it's likely to get firmware updates for longer. Next up is RAM. Now 16 gigs was our target for comfortable gaming and multitasking, including running the notorious memory hog, Chrome Web Browser. But, the thing that we kind of ran into here is that memory deals on eBay were few and far between. So we ended up going with this, like the definition of bog standard, no name DDR4 2400. And this stuff is weird. Like there's no visible branding, even on the chips themselves where you'd normally see, you know, some kind of name you recognize like Samsung or SK Hynix. And when we fired up these modules to test them, we couldn't even find a vendor ID string. Spooky. I mean, at least it was cheap. This is funny too. Warranty void if removed. What warranty? From who? <laughs> Nobody knows. <laughs> anyway, speaking of cheap, our storage options. Now we wanted an SSD that was large enough to handle our operating system and our key applications. So a Crucial MX500 250 gig fit the bill just nicely. Not only is it, yes, dirt cheap, but it also has a DRAM cache, which is important for its long-term performance. The one thing it can't do is handle a big Steam library. So we also grabbed this two terabyte Western Digital 7200 RPM Enterprise Drive, which was a steal at $49. So both of these are either new or open box because buying heavily used storage is just not the brand of fun that we're gonna get into today. Finally, we come to the single most important piece of any gaming rig, our graphics card. So our goal was to pick up something that's capable of running 1440p at 60 FPS or 1080p at much higher frame rates, like, you know, 120 or 144 Hertz. And so we quickly narrowed down our search to either the GeForce GTX 980 Ti or GTX 1070 Ti, which are surprisingly quite similarly priced at around 300 US dollars right now, which is a bit strange when you consider that the 980 Ti is actually closer to a regular 1070 rather than a 1070 Ti. So obviously we ended up then with the 1070 Ti. At least though, to the 980 Ti's credit, it's not as bad a value as some of the older Titans that we were considering early on. 
So right now, this looks like about the sweet spot in the used market. So I guess a lot of the folks who bought 1070 Ti's are upgrading, or else we got uh, a mining card, which is possible. It's clean, but it looks cleaned as opposed to clean. So after a not insignificant amount of cable management, thank you, Anthony, we've got our build in all of its second-hand glory. All in, we spent about $776 before shipping, which if we were in the continental US would have been about 50 bucks, which is just about $250 saved versus our retail build. Now, there are a couple of small issues like that wireless antenna I was so pleased about being included, doesn't plug into our motherboard, and that I.O. shield that we were so happy to have is also not correct for our motherboard. But hey, gaming is gaming, so why don't we take it for a spin? All right, oh, we need to turn V-Sync off, oof. Okay, hold on, just need to turn off that uh, motion blur. Ew, motion blur, ew, ew. All right, resume the game. Dang, Anthony. This is one cheap 130 FPS at 2560 by 1440 in Doom. Look at that responsiveness. I mean, you'd never know, sort of looking at the frame rates we're running at here, that this is like a you know ghetto, jank eBay PC. I mean, it doesn't make your skills any better, but like, not bad at all. Oops, hit him in the ankles. Oh no, oh no. CPU temps were sitting nice in the just 40 plus range, although bear in mind, of course, AMD does record CPU temperatures slightly differently from Intel. Why don't we do Shadow of the Tomb Raider, something a little newer. Everything working exactly as we'd expect. Why don't we crank this puppy too? Exclusive full screen, turn that V-Sync off. Highest, no motion blur. So here we're stuck with the built-in benchmark, but that'll still give us a pretty good idea of how this guy's gonna run. Were you using hot glue for this build, Anthony? Uh, no, but I did use a few tweezers. Ah, well, someone got hot glue on the table. Oh, you know what, I think that was me. Not bad. So remembering that we were targeting 1440p, 60 FPS, that is looking pretty darn nice. So yeah, we're a little on the low side, but remember, we absolutely cranked this game, and this is one of the top AAA titles from 2018, so. Oh good, he gave me a gun. Oh, that's so nice. What a nice person. And inspect weapon, really? That's a button to stare at your weapon? So we're in Apex Legends now. Uh, I'm aware that the HD textures are not done downloading, but for some reason they've stopped coming down, and I don't really know what the issue is with that. So we're just gonna go ahead and assume that it'll be some performance amount that's a little lower than this. The good news is that's honestly pretty fine because we're looking at like 70, 80 plus frames per second. Not bad at all. I'm officially better than half of the people who joined this match. Do I have any bullet guns, button gun bullets? Yeah, he's, he's done, oof. Oof, all right, and we're dead. So that was it for um, my Apex Legends career. Could have gone pro if only I had any skills and uh, practiced. So at the end of the day, some of the items were either the same price or more expensive on eBay compared to retail, but if you're strapped for cash and you need a cheap way to get some gaming grade hardware, at least some of them were a better deal as long as you don't care too much about warranties. Now, the risk of getting something that's just dead on arrival is not as much as you might think, thanks to eBay's, from our experience anyway, excellent buyer protection. So what it really comes down to then is your willingness to deal with a premature failure that doesn't come with any kind of manufacturer warranty support. As for me, well, as a tinkerer, the way that I've always looked at it is that if I save nearly the cost of my single most expensive component on a build, then I can literally afford to replace any piece of it that fails, and worst case scenario, I'll be back where I started. Then, if it doesn't fail, well then, 
I get to keep that money in my pocket. And that's a pretty appealing reward for a little bit of extra effort and patience. No matter what you need a website for, Squarespace is the place to go. You can use their all-in-one platform to make a beautiful, functional website in an extraordinary short amount of time. They've got award-winning templates that you can use as starting points for a huge range of projects. And if you need any help, Squarespace is there to help you. They've got webinars, a full series of help guides, and you can even contact their customer support 24 seven via live chat and email. And they've got tons of great tools. If you already have a third party domain, you can just transfer it over to Squarespace. They've got e-commerce features built into every one of their sites to help you sell merch or services online. You can publish an Apple news format. You can use their logo designer. It's awesome. Head over to squarespace.com forward slash LTT. We'll have that linked below and you can get 10% off your first purchase. So thanks for watching guys. If this video sucked, you know what to do. But if it was awesome, hit like, get subscribed, or maybe consider checking out where to buy the stuff we featured at the link in the video description. Also down there is our merch store, which has cool shirts like this one and our community forum, which you should totally join.